Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 30. Nasdaq up 61. S&P is up 12 and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the first hour. Don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Real easy to get Mastering Probability the way you do this, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see right in the featured content, Mastering Probability by our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes. You hit subscribe. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199. You can get it for a year for $1195, which is a savings of $593. Now keep in mind, all of these come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you have nothing to lose, everything to gain. As soon as you subscribe, bottom line, Steve has a bunch of other archives and lessons in there that you get immediately. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, I just heard you say that when I go to Washington, D.C. to visit my daughter, I'm being tracked. Oh, man, this is pretty intense, I'm telling you. And, <laughs> and, and, and folks, so the, the end of that story, the end, the end of my speculation, now that's, yeah. that's a fact. This just happened, okay? This just came yeah. across. The thing that's going to be really bizarre about that, and that's why even watching the metals market and everything else, it's like, you know, we know how the survivalists go. I mean, you know, they like their food and they like all this, and they've been worrying about something like that for years. Well, that's going to affect these markets, man. I mean, because it's like, what happened, the way that got, got done, folks, is that it's by some mistake, evidently, because it's a classified deal, really? they were asking Congress for another $1.55 million. And this article saying that, hey, it's still going to go on. Four months. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Let me tell you. Hey, that's D.C. for you, man. And so yeah. I guess the question is, why? Why is it being done? Is it being sure. done because of the threat? Is it, you know, they're going to deny everything, of course, but, you know. For the markets, I think it's going to, you know, it might make, it make a difference here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, how about this? A great weekend for the Irish out there. Yeah. Right? Did, how was that? Did you, I don't know if you caught any I of did. the... I did. I did. And, you know, you know, it's amazing, too. It just goes to show that, I mean, you're, you're a big golfer. I mean, I guess, Lowry, I mean, when you're playing rough weather all the time, you know what I mean? He oh, could handle no doubt. it, right? I mean, you know, it was, I, I wish Nicholson and, you know, Woods were there. It was, that's so unusual that they both didn't make the cut, you know? Well, um, what's interesting, and, you know, they really uh, uh, pointed out a number of different times during, during the telecast, or maybe it was the coverage afterwards, you know, in the U.S. So take, for example, you know, Saturday, we're teeing off, we get to the first hole, we... we we get up to the first green, and at our course, if there is a lightning strike within five miles, uh, the horn automatically blows. Everybody's got to clear off the course, right. come in, and wait for 30 minutes. Over there, over in, in Ireland, Scotland, uh, you know, they're not receiving as much um, lightning as we are. So they're going to go ahead and continue to play in the rain out there. Right. And, uh, you know, it's so, so in the U.S., we're, we're kind of spoiled, I suppose. Yeah. Not really spoiled. I mean, nobody wants to get hit by lightning. No, no. You know, so, so we don't have that type of experience. And if you watch the even the PGA tournaments, you know, the same kind of thing. In fact, there they have to even be more cautious. And they take that, that, that ring. It's not five miles. It's much further out because they've got to get patrons off of the course. Yes. You know, you know they, they know they can get the tour players off pretty quickly, but how do you get uh, 20 or 30,000 fans? But, but the, the tournament this weekend, the British Open, was just was phenomenal to watch. And uh, I, for me, I thought it was great that Lowry won. Oh, you know, yeah. just, just an ideal book, story. Right? That, it's, yeah. It's, it's totally a storybook. There's no doubt. Yeah. And, and in a day and age where you typically see the golfers out there and there are these machines, these physiques of machines, and they're yeah. working out, I think that uh, Shane Lowry is only working out uh, with his, maybe his right and his left hand, yeah. lifting those Guinness stouts. I know, man. It's awesome. <laughs> right? And, yeah. you know, and, and if you heard his quote, folks, is, you know, yeah, you Northern Ireland, Republican Ireland, and you get Ireland. And his quote was like, "Listen, we're all one country." Yeah. Um, when we're golf talking golf, it, golf brings it together, and that's yeah. so cool, man. I mean, because yeah, it's absolutely. like you know, it's like, and they got they got some great golfers, though, man. I mean, oh, I mean they do. Yeah, there's no doubt. They do. Man. Pretty great far. golfers. Yeah. Well, look, let's talk just uh, briefly yeah. here about what's going on and what I see going on inside the markets. Uh, today is, uh, what, July the uh, 22nd. And what we're looking at here, you and I have looked at this uh, uh, several times. This is the annual, this is the average annual seasonal cycle for the Dow over the last 86 years. Typically, the uh, Dow forms a, a top, the summertime blues, what I'll call it, on July 21st. 
Um, so we'll just say the, uh, and, and it moves lower into about the October 13 time frame. So here's how I take a look at cycles, Tom. I use these as a guideline, and then what I do is I look to see if there's any type of topping signals to correlate or to go right along with the timing of this. Well, if we take a look at all the indices, when I say all the indices, I'm referring to the Dow, the S&P, NASDAQ, and the Russell 2000. For the first three, Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ, we can just take a look at Price, draw some trend lines, and what we can see is that price has hit those trend line areas. Inside the Russell 2000, this has been a struggle and has just been moving sideways for the last five, six months out here. So that says, okay, we're up at resistance, but resistance does not necessarily mean it's a topping pattern. So then when we go down and we dive down into the daily time frame chart for the Dow, what we get, I use a, a handful of different uh, tools to identify tops and bottoms. Some of those tools come from uh, Tom DeMar. Mark. One of the tools that he created many years ago is called a sequential cell pattern out here. I, I won't go into the details of that, but I do teach uh, subscribers about the TD setup nine count. This is a 913 count out here. And what we can see is you're looking at the chart here for the daily time frame for the uh, Dow out here. It actually formed a TD sequential cell count. It did that on July 15th. Now, just because you get the count does not mean that you have a top. There's a requirement there, and that requirement is you don't get the cell signal until you see a close below the close of a bar four bars earlier. Well, that actually occurred uh, last week on July 15th, on July 18th, my apologies. So 15th was the cell count. The 18th was the actual cell signal. And so we do have a topping pattern for the Dow, ties into the longer term trend line that we looked at, as well as the seasonal cycle. So my tools say that the Dow has topped. We've got these summertime blues out there. And if the unfavorable seasonal cycle does kick in, I'm not expecting a crash or a straight line move to the downside. The Dow is likely to pull back into where it had broken out. And where I, what I use for a breakout area is I use this, I use another one of Tom DeMarc's tools. It's called the nine count tool. Tool, and the low of that nine count or the high, depending on if it's a if it's a high or low we're looking at, identifies where price really took off because you needed nine consecutive closes above the bar four bars earlier. And you don't see those happen that often, but they do occur near tops and bottoms. When they don't occur near tops and bottoms, we can still use that nine count to identify where price broke out. Inside the Dow, that's 24,962. Now, to confirm a change in trend, Tom, what I look at is I look for levels of support to be broken. And there I go to our TAS market profile tools. Here we can see that sustained moves to the upside. You'll see some green arrows. The buying opportunity is when price pulls back to the bottom of the box. That's where buyers are. But when when we see the bottom of those boxes fail, that's where we begin to see changes in trend. Those would be the red arrows. Well, on Friday, we actually had a change in trend signal inside the uh, Dow equity futures contract. On the way down, I use horizontal trading ranges to understand where price may find support. So inside the Dow, the first level of support that I'm looking for is in about the 26.890 area, 880-ish type area. That'll become my first target on the way down for the Dow. The New York Stock Exchange, it also generated a topping pattern. So, Tom, for the seasonal cycle out here, I've got that we have just kicked into the summertime blues. And folks, you want to fill that toolbox up? Steve's more than willing to let you have his toolbox. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go into featured content. You hit, hit Mastering Probability. You subscribe right here, right now. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Steve, you have a great one, safe one. Of course, we look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.